in the history of television. No one has done the weather on television in Austin, Texas, longer than me. I really am proud of that. 30 years of, of continuous uh, television weather forecasting in Austin is the all-time record in the history of Austin TV. And nobody can take that away from me yet. Maybe one day, David may end up uh, surpassing me one of these days, but uh, not yet. And now, your weather. Highs tomorrow, 50s. Can you believe that? We should be in the 70s this time of year. Here's our forecast. I'm Jim Spencer, and I have been forecasting the weather here on KXAN television for 30 years and two months. Hi, boys and girls. I'm Jim Spencer here in the KXAN First Warning Weather Center. And since I couldn't bring all of you with me here, I thought I would bring the Weather Center to you. Uh, a television forecaster is somebody that uh, not only assembles the actual uh, information that you're going to present to the viewer, but also creates the entire story and presentation that you present to that viewer. Moving to the southwest at about 20 miles per hour. Again, a very strong thunderstorm in the heart of the Austin area right now. A forecaster is a person that, that analyzes weather data and comes up with the uh, hopefully correct answer. What's gonna happen tomorrow? You just talk to the camera. Uh, you don't you know, put on a radio voice or anything like that. You, you talk to the person uh, on the other side of the camera as if they're in the room and you just uh, be yourself, not, you know, yelling at them. Um, and sometimes people, I think, think I'm, I'm too loud and maybe I am too loud, but I'm, I get excited about the weather and it just comes out there. And I do get excited about the weather and it does show. But then again, that's me presenting it naturally. The National Weather Service has again issued that tornado warning or actually uh, issued a separate one. The first one expired at 745. Another tornado warning for Eastern Williamson County now until 845. I had a mentor and his name was Gary England. I started watching him when I was in third grade. By the time I was in fourth grade, I said, I'm gonna be a weatherman when I grow up. I wanna do what Gary does. And he was so kind. I mean, he returned my handwritten letter from you know fifth grade, which I still have, as I got into college and said, hey, can I come visit you? I wanna, I wanna talk to you about what you do. And he said, come on up. And he was a super down to earth, laid back, tell it as it is, and if he messed up during the weather, he'd laugh it off and go on. And that was endearing to, to, to viewers. And he taught me how to, how, to, how to do the weather like he did. Hello, I'm Jim Spencer, and welcome to the inaugural K edition, KXAN. Keep rolling, or start over, or keep rolling. What's your birthday? July 30th, I'm a Leo. July 30th, you want the year? Yeah. 1963. I was the oldest of five, three girls and uh, two boys. I, I, had a, I had a clear, defined path that I was going to take, and I knew what that was. I started at KADA Radio in Ada, Oklahoma, pretending I was experienced a little bit as a DJ. I convinced them that they needed to start a news department at that little radio station, and they did. They made me the news director. I got an offer from the KTEN TV. They brought me over, made me the morning news anchor. That tells you how big of a television station it was. Here's a college sophomore that is anchoring the morning news. But I told uh, my news director and my general manager when they hired me, I, I, I'm gonna come to work for you and I appreciate the opportunity, but I want you to know the first weather opening that happens at this television station, it's mine. I want it, I will make it work, I promise you, but I want that job. Okay, Jim, all right, calm down. October 1984, we had the morning uh, uh, opening for the morning weather forecaster. Even though my uh, meteorological knowledge at the time was all you know, self-taught, what little weather and climate um, uh, classes were available at East Central University in Ada, Oklahoma, I had taken those. And so I had just enough background to, to go on the air and know what I was talking about. I owe my uh, being in Austin, Texas to my uh, friend and former coworker Deborah Seidel. Deborah had gone from Ada to here and she was anchoring the morning news. She called me and said, hey, we're starting the first hour long morning newscast down in Austin at KXAN. 
and they're looking for a weatherman. Uh, do you, you, you want to come down here? You know, I did not know much about Austin I, at all. I mean, all I knew was that, you know, we were supposed to hate Austin and everything Texas because I was born and raised in Oklahoma, right? But all my friends were like, oh my gosh, you're going to Austin? Yeah. Oh man, it's the coolest city ever. And so they were more excited about it than I was. And I had never planned on, you know, staying here 30 years, honestly. It was, it was a stepping stone back to Oklahoma. My dream was to go back to Oklahoma and work in Oklahoma City with Gary England, my childhood, you know, hero, my mentor. But after I got here and did my first contract, and after three years uh, in, on the morning show, they moved me to the nighttime. And um, I couldn't turn down being the head of the weather department in Austin, Texas in 1993. So I took, the, took that position and I've been in that position uh, up until now. 36, Austin, first, best, live. This is News 36 at 10. At least 32 people are confirmed dead as severe weather strikes Central Texas. The Williamson County town of Gerald has suffered the greatest damage in a series of bad weather incidents in Central Texas. A twister flattened several homes there, taking at least 30 lives. It was the, it was the most awful day of my career. It will go into the record books as one of the worst tornadoes of all time in Central Texas history. It was uh, an F5 tornado. Back then they were just called F5s, not EF5s. We picked up the massive tornado as it moved into Williamson County and followed its path to the south along Interstate 35 for 15 miles. I knew at the time that it would be the only F5 tornado I ever worked in my whole career, and that has proven to be true. That kind of force is why the casualty count is so high in the small town of Gerald. We've never had an F5 tornado down here in this part of Texas, ever. There had never even been an F4 tornado in Travis County until that day, about 30 minutes after the Gerald F5 and F4 formed out at Lake Travis. That's the first and only F4 tornado that's ever happened in Travis County. That's how rare it was. Some of our uh, professionals here shooting some uh, incredible tape of the tornado as it hit Gerald, as you saw a little earlier in the newscast. This is amateur videotape, though, shot by uh, the James Pinson up in the 620 and Anderson Mill area. This is the tornado that uh, destroyed the Albertsons grocery store. Uh, it was a no-brainer there was going to be a tornado because tornadoes had started forming at 2 or 3 o'clock, you know, up around Waco, one after another. And it was building south along that front. And so I had time to, you know, put makeup on and tell everybody, hey, get the camera pointed in here. I'm going to be going on here pretty soon. And this is obviously coming south. So we went on more than 20 minutes before the National Weather Service even issued the first warning for Williamson County and said, there are tornadoes forming in this environment up in Bell County. And this is working down toward Williamson County and specifically mentioned Gerald and taking cover, et cetera. Uh, we were on the air wall to wall continuously long before anybody talking about tornadoes in being indicated by our radar. We had uh, the only live Doppler radar in Austin, Texas at the time. I could see it over the trees and it had a long tail on it. Mm -hmm. And I said, so oh, no, dear Lord, please not that. The frustrating thing about Gerald and the maddening thing about it is that we had probably the, the best warning for any tornado, you know, that's ever happened around here, especially a significant, deadly tornado. We had excellent warning, calling out the communities where it was coming, where it was gonna happen. And then still, 27 people died that afternoon. It was awful. But they died doing what they were supposed to do in your standard tornado, reaction. One of the things we talked about all afternoon too, we, we talked about safety in your home, going to a middle floor. That tornado wiped homes completely off their foundations, swept them away. There was nothing left but the concrete foundation. Even plumbing was pulled out of the concrete. It was, it was gone. It was devastating. We, we delivered, we did everything we could possibly do to help make people safe and still 27 people died. I was proud of our coverage, but also devastated. Uh, at the loss of life from this freak, freak tornado. How it formed uh, is still 
mind-boggling. This is the incredible tornado that uh, killed so many people up in jail and uh, wreaked such havoc on that community. Um, a family member told me privately, two of the three of them survived, one was killed. But she told me privately that what I told them to do to, to make themselves safe from the tornado saved their lives. Two of, the, two of the people that were in the home. Again, a third died. But two of the people that were in the home did survive the tornado with injuries, but they survived it, despite their home being swept off the foundation. Told me that the steps that I told them to take saved their lives. And that is the most rewarding thing you can hear in my business. The very first thing I do is start looking at weather models. And I will lay it out on a piece of paper, seven days looking forward. I like having a piece of paper in my hand that if everything hits the fan, I can always look back here and I've got everything I needed to talk about here in terms of the temperatures, the day and the rainfall data and, and the lake levels. It's just, it's easy reference material and I, and I like it. And then um, when I make the forecast, I mean, it's not hard. It's not hard at all. In fact, I'll usually do it right here on this sheet. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Friday Saturday, Saturday Sunday. Sunday. I write out the whole seven day chart. Um, as I'm going through everything, the numbers, the maps, then I can jot down my actual forecast. Um, and this is where, that's where the money is. Ozone action day today, that stagnant air. I remember the first time I met David. I'm David Yeomans, I'm a meteorologist at KXAM. Uh, we talk on the phone first. It was after my freshman year. And he had reached out to uh, a buddy of mine. He said, oh, you're from Austin. I can uh, get you an internship with this guy, Jim, that I know. So the first time I met him was uh, in person here at the TV station when he was a freshman in college. Part of the time I'm noticing. I was half. To, yeah. He had a great delivery. Don't, don't look anywhere but in the camera. But it was. <laughs> But just remember, you need to be on a little further than you think you do. Okay. There, there's kind of a, a frat boy kind of uh, uh, tone. 27% relative humidity. We haven't seen that in a very long time, and it feels good. We worked on that for a while. I, I, I'm going to feel bad when he, when he sees this. But um, uh, he, he was a great absorber of critique and information. Lake levels remain low as well, about four feet below normal at Buchanan. He would have me write up a forecast of my own. And I remember one time I said, I think it's gonna be, I don't know what it was, 67 degrees that night or something, which was cooler than the previous night. And he said, why do you, what's your justification for that? And I said, well, uh, the winds are calmer and the dew points lower and the skies are clear. And he said, oh, fair enough, I agree. And he changed his forecast a, a little bit colder than he had thought. He gave me this feeling um, that, that what I said mattered and that I knew something about meteorology. I told him, I think within the first few days that he interned with me, if you wanna do this job, you have what it takes to do it. Uh, David will tell you that he lives and breathes the weather. One of my favorite things about the weather. The power is flashing in and out. Is being out in it. I hope you can hear that. There's a real sense of terror just being outside. I think when you're passionate about the weather, you have that daily drive. It's like a daily challenge against mother nature to try to predict what it's gonna do. It, it's not only his passion outside of work, he's getting paid for and living his passion every single day on television, and he is damn good at it. Three years ago, David had people trying to hire him everywhere. I mean, I'm talking major markets, the biggest cities in the country, right? And David loves Austin, Texas. I haven't found a better place in the country or possibly in the world. He's so family oriented. His family is here. His girlfriend Izzy is here. Um, he loves everything about Austin, Texas. And we had a really heart-to-heart -heart talk about three years ago. And I said, David, I cannot discourage you from taking you know, one of these jobs. There's more than one, right? David is very, very good at what he does. Is it money and prestige or is it quality of life and your family and all of that in Austin, Texas? And there's not a right or wrong answer, but it's a decision you have to make. But let me tell you one more thing, David. In three years, I've told KXAN after my 30th anniversary that I'm going to step back. And so there's no doubt 
that you would take my position in three years. Having the opportunity to fill that role and kind of take his place after 30 years here is incredible. It's flattering, it's humbling, uh, but it's also pressure because I want to be sure, you know, I'm not Jim Spencer and I'm not going to be Jim Spencer, uh, but I want, to, I want people to trust me as much as they trust Jim. I want to earn that trust. Uh, I want to be there whenever there's severe weather that threatens people because that's what Jim has done for years and that's how you earn that trust. Um, and, and I want to I want to be someone that's enjoyable to watch, someone that they, they enjoy to let into their living rooms every night. He uh, is going to be absolutely the best possible replacement for me uh, going forward. We're still going to be working together. I'm still going to be coming in um, and helping out when I'm needed and in severe weather. But uh, David's going to be the head of the department, and I couldn't be happier, and our audience couldn't be more fortunate to have him. I sincerely mean that. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jim Spencer, News 36, first warning weather. I've done the thing that I've wanted to do as a child every single day for 37 years. My childhood dream, I have lived every day for 37 years. I mean, how many people can say that? When I go to career days, I tell the kids in the audience this exact story, that I get to do what I love to do every single day when I go to work. And so, boys and girls, those of you that are thinking right now that I really want to do this when I grow up, I really love, you know, this space, or I really do want to be a firefighter or a police officer, whatever it is that you are passionate about, you can make that happen starting right now if you just focus on that and never let anybody distract you from doing what you want to do. And then when you grow up, it's not like going to work every day. It's like going in and doing your hobby every day and being paid for it. You know, it's the, it's the, only, way to, it's the only way to live. It's the only type of career I, I think anybody should have is something that they're passionate about.